Okay, started? Yeah. All right, good. Okay, so today's topic is perfect competition in the short run. Okay, so the main things you want to know when we finish here today is how the business makes its decision about maximizing profits, so the profit maximization rule. You want to understand allocative and productive efficiency in perfect competition, and you want to understand when the firm shuts down and when it exits. Okay? So, I've drawn uh, the market for rice on the left here, and the, uh, the rice firm on the right. Okay? So this is kind of a new thing. We call these side-by-side -side graphs. Um, I can almost guarantee that on the AP exam, uh, you will either get a question which asks you to do this, or a question about monopoly as the first FRQ. Okay, so you really should know this model um, if for no other reason for that reason. Okay, so typically in the question on the, on the test, it will be something like draw side-by-side by side graphs of the market for rice and the typical rice firm. Okay, so that's what I've done here. Okay, so this should be familiar to you. Okay, and typically we have supply, demand, um, and they intersect at P, uh, you give us P1 and Q1 in the market for rice. Okay, um, and this is the rice firm, which I'll explain in a second. So this first market structure is called perfect competition. So we sort of differentiate between mar uh, market structures by the characteristics of those markets. So the first one is how many sellers are there in the market? In a perfectly, in a perfectly competitive market, there are many sellers. If you think about rice, there are thousands, hundreds of thousands of rice farmers probably across the world. Um, and so there are many sellers. So the first characteristic of perfect competition is many sellers, okay? Um, the second characteristic is that those sellers produce an identical product. So all rice is exactly the same. So we don't care whether we buy rice from farmer A or farmer B because both produce exactly the same rice. The only thing we care about is what? Price. Price. Okay, because there's no difference in the products. Okay, so farmer A charges a higher price, we buy from farmer B. Okay, that's different from other markets. Look, if you think about cell phones, they're all phones, just like all rice is rice. But some phones will buy at a higher price than other phones because we like the characteristics of those phones. They're different, they're not identical. Okay. So that, then a market like cell phones wouldn't be perfectly competitive, right? But rice is. Now you can probably think about ways in the real world that some rice is different from other rice, but uh, for the matter, for our, for our purposes, we're assuming that rice, all rice is the same, all rice is identical. Okay. So what this means is that because there are many sellers and all rice is identical, the farmers in this market, the firms, have no power to control price. Okay, so the vocabulary there is they have no market power, or another way of saying that is they have no monopoly power. Okay, um, therefore they are what we call price takers. The price of the goods is established here in the market, and the firms have to charge that price. Okay, they can't charge any other price. If they charge a higher price, they lose all their sales. They charge a lower price, they can't make a profit. Okay, so they're, they're made to take the price which is established in the market. Here we have uh, initially price P1, and so then that price gets carried over here to the firm, and the firm has to charge that price. Okay, you draw a horizontal here, horizontal curve. Okay, that's the firm's marginal revenue. Right, so every good it sells, it sells for this price P1. So every marginal unit it sells, that's how much revenue it gets. So that's its marginal revenue. This curve also is all the combinations of price and quantity that the firm faces. So it's also its demand curve. Okay? Now, if they sell every, for every good at that price P1, it's also the, the firm's marginal re oh, excuse me, a average revenue. And as we've said, it's the price of the good 
Okay, so every time you draw this graph, I should see this to the right of your curve. Okay, marginal revenue equals demand equals average, average revenue equals price. Now in the textbooks and stuff, you won't always see this, but I want it. Okay, so on tests and assessments, always please um, put all these in there, even if, even if it's not necessary to answer the question. Okay, now you look at this list of spell. Mr. Dark. Mr. Dark. If you remember Mr. Dark, you just always remember that, okay? Really easy, okay? Um, I'm not going to answer questions, but I'll answer them after, okay? Um, okay, so here, what, I, what we're drawing here at, that, at this point is a perfectly competitive rice market in what's called long run equilibrium where the price of the good is at the minimum of average total cost. Okay. In the long run, this, this, this market will always return to this equilibrium, but we're not gonna worry about that today. I'll explain that next class. Okay. Now let's assume that you know, a report comes out and the report is that rice causes some terrible disease. Okay. Consumption of rice causes, causes cancer or something like this. Okay. That's going to cause the demand for rice to reduce from D1 to D2. Okay, if the, if the demand for rice reduces, the price goes down from P, P1 to P2 and quantity reduces from Q1 to Q2. Okay, at the lower price, these farmers have to accept that price. They have to charge that price because they're price takers. Okay, and you can see here that that shifts the marginal revenue curve down. Okay, always use these arrows if you, if you can remember. Okay, so we have a, it, the marginal revenue curve has gone from MR1 to MR2. Okay, just label it that way. Now you'll notice that at this point, the business's marginal revenue, excuse me, average revenue is less than its average cost. Okay. So for every unit it sells, it sells the good for less than it costs to produce the good. So we know that the business is making a loss, right? If you're thinking about profit, profit is revenue minus cost, okay? Or, or another way of expressing that, it's the quantity sold times the average revenue minus the average total cost, okay? This is the per unit profit times the quantity gives you the total profit. If the average cost, like over here, is greater than the average revenue, then the profits must be negative. The business, is, the business must be making a loss in the long run, okay? And so the question is, what does the business do? In the long run, if the business is making less than average cost, it should exit the industry, okay? So if average revenue is less than average cost, price is less than average cost, the business in the long run must exit the industry. But it can't exit in the, in the short run, by definition of the short run. So the short run is defined in micro as the time period in which a, business can, a business's capital is fixed, or in which there's only one variable input, labor. Okay, All other inputs, capital and land, are fixed in the short run. What that means is you can't enter the industry in the short run, right? Because you can't increase the amount of capital you have from zero to something greater than zero. And in the short run, you can't exit the industry because you can't reduce the amount of capital and land you have, okay? You can't sell your tractors, you can't sell your land, uh, and you can't sell with other, uh, whatever other inputs you have. You can fire workers and hire workers, because that's a variable input in the short run, but you can't uh, subtract and from and increase your capital and land, okay? So you're stuck in the industry. In the long run, you can sell your land, you can sell your tractors, and you get out. Or you can buy land and buy tractors and get in, okay? But in the short run, you can't. So then the question becomes, what's the short run decision that, the, that, the, that, that, that this farmer faces, okay? Now here, at, in this
initially when demand decreases from D1 to D2, okay, price goes to P2, this farmer is making less than average total cost, but he's covering his variable costs, right? So what that means is that for every uh, unit of output that he sells, that he, that he produces and sells, he gets more for that unit then it costs him to pay his workers those are his variable inputs right so in order to grow corn, uh, corn, in order to grow rice and um, and and bring it to market okay he's going to have to pay his workers something to do that okay what we see here is that he gets more the p2 is greater than what he has to pay his workers for each unit of rice okay and you say, then why is he making a loss? If he's covering those costs, why is he making a loss? He's making a loss because variable costs are not his only cost, right? Fixed costs are, 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 are part of this cost structure. So imagine this rice farmer has one fixed cost. It's an insurance policy, okay? It's a one-year insurance policy that he has to pay, and it's like $100, okay? So even if this farmer produces nothing, zero units of output, he still has a $100 loss. He has to pay that fixed cost, okay? The only question is, can he produce so that the loss is less than $100? Can he reduce or minimize the loss? So we say in this range, He's above the minimum of average variable cost, but below the minimum of average total cost, he will produce in order to minimize his loss. He has to pay that hundred dollars. But if he produces at P2 up to this point, he can reduce the loss, maybe to seventy dollars or sixty dollars. He can make some money, right? When he produces, he's getting more than he pays his workers. But in the end, he's still going to not cover both his fixed cost and his variable cost. He'll only cover the variable cost. In this range, so that therefore, in this range, if the price is greater than the minimum of average variable cost, we would say that the farmer should produce to the point that marginal cost and marginal revenue intersect, okay, in order to minimize his loss. Okay. Now let's assume that there's a new event in the market. Not only does rice cause cancer, but national income reduces. Okay, so consumers have less income, and as a result, demand decreases even more to D3. And now the price, is, the price goes down to P3 in the market. The farmers are made to accept that price, they're price takers, even though they have to charge this price. And so we have a new marginal revenue, a new Mr. Dark here. Okay? At this price, the business, every unit it produces has to pay more to its workers than it receives at P3. And so it doesn't make sense for this firm to produce anything in the short run. It should shut down. Okay, let me give you an example of this, of shutdown. Not in the rice market, but in a different market. Ski slopes, okay? Ski slopes in the winter are open. The price they can, they, they can sell tickets for is, 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 is somewhere up in this range. Okay, they can make money. Okay, and so they produce. But then, during the summer, there's no snow on the slopes. So they can't sell any tickets, right? They could, they'd be somewhere down here. They can't cover their costs, right? In the winter, they can bring people in to run the, um, to run whatever needs to be run on the hill. They can, they can have people you know, in there selling hot dogs and beer and whatever, and soda, whatever they're selling, okay? They can have employees working and make money. They can cover those costs, okay? But in the summer, they can't, okay? They can't, they, they can't, they can't charge enough to get people on the hill to cover those labor costs. So what do, what do ski slopes do in the summer? They shut down. 
Nobody works for ski slope in the summer, and they don't sell a single ticket, okay? Because they can't cover their costs in the summer. In the winter they can, so they operate, okay? So shutdown means you produce zero units of output in the short run, and then you exit in the long run. If the price remains low, you exit in the long run. So if the price of the good is less than the minimum of average variable, variable cost, that's this range here, then the firm shuts down in the short run and exits in the long run. Its loss in the short run will be exactly equal to what? Its fixed cost. Okay, so if this business, when it's $100 fixed cost, produces zero units of output, variable cost will be zero, its loss will be 100. Okay? If the price is greater than average variable cost, but less than average total cost, it produces in order to minimize its loss, but exits in the short run, but exits in the long run. Okay, if price is greater than average total cost, it's making a profit. Now, just to review here, okay, quickly, um, and then hit one more point. Okay, uh, the decision rule in terms of output for the business is that the business produces at the point where marginal cost equals marginal revenue. Here. Okay. So in any market structure, that's always going to be the profit maximizing level of output, the point at which marginal cost and marginal revenue are equal. Okay? And so you see that here, you see it here. Okay? Then the last question we have is, is this market efficient? Okay. So let's just look at this market here, when the price is at P1, and, uh, and it's in what we call long run equilibrium. At P1, we would say that this market is productively efficient. Productive efficiency essentially means that businesses are using their resources um, as efficiently as they can. They're using as few resources as possible to produce one unit of output. So what that means in this graph is that they're at the lowest cost they can possibly be on average. So at the minimum of the average total cost curve. But the price of the good is equal to the minimum of average total cost, we would say that this, uh, this firm and this industry is productively efficient. And it is, okay? The price here, P1, is equal to the minimum of average total cost, this curve here, okay? And therefore, it's productively efficient. So if you get a question on the test that asks you, is this market productively efficient? The price is P1, you say, yes, it is. And you say, because P equals min APC. Okay? The second question is, is this market allocatively efficient? Right? And if you remember, the, we define allocative efficiency as the last unit produced, at the last unit produced, the marginal cost of that unit is equal to the marginal revenue of that unit. If that's true, we have an allocatively efficient outcome. Here, are the marginal cost and the marginal revenue equal? Yeah, they are. Okay, at this unit of output, at, at Q1, Okay. Marginal cost here is equal to marginal revenue here. Okay. okay, and so we would say we have an allocatively efficient outcome. That in long run equilibrium, perfect competition is both productively efficient and allocatively efficient. It's productively efficient because the price is equal to mean APC, and it's allocatively efficient because marginal cost equals marginal revenue. Marginal cost equals marginal benefit. Okay.